Welcome everyone to the Pantheon of M. I am your host, Ray, and today we're looking at Season 2 of Cloak and Dagger. Uh, this is the first half, the first five episodes, and it takes place after the events of the season finale, about three to four months, and we see what happens to all the characters. So a quick highlight, this is the following that's taking place. Tyrone, you would think that after the events of Cloak and Dagger or Tyrone and Tandy saving New Orleans from a dark energy that was turning everyone into crazy monsters, zombies, or rabid... Um, uh, creatures, uh, you would think the city of New Orleans would appreciate them or acknowledge that we were in dire straits. But in fact, the opposite's true. Tyrone is still a wanted man for a murder he didn't commit, but Tandy's life's turned around a little bit. She, after learning that her father was an abusive uh, husband, her and her mother has reconnected. Uh, they're seeking therapy together, uh, counseling, and it's working out for them. Uh, Father Delgado, after Tyrone touched him and was able to unlock his fears, we realized that there was a dark secret he was harboring, a death that he committed, and as such, he's lost his faith, because not only has Tyrone lost his now wanted man, uh, he, he questioned his own um, place in life and what he's done in his past that he had run away from. So he's taken to the bottle and has walked away from the church. Also, we see Bridget O'Reilly, Detective O'Reilly, what happened to her in the post credit scenes, because the last thing we see in the last few seconds of season one is her coming out of the swamp of Louisiana, a completely changed individual. But we don't know how much, but we find out the extent of what happened to her and how that's playing out in the new season. Uh, but enough about that. To get into the real psychology and understanding what's really going on, especially how the, the series, especially in season one, used a lot of dream interpretation, uh, we're going into a darker dimension this time, which kind of relies on your on your subconscious and what our, our in, internal conflicts are about, both for Ty and Tandy and Detective O'Reilly. So with that, let's go to my partner, Evie, and get, hit, get his thoughts. Uh. So basically, give us your analysis of the first few episodes, because this is more, um, besides, the, besides the pilot episode, this is very cerebral. Yeah, very. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. so, okay, so let's break it down. So the first one, so it starts off not too bad, because we start off with uh, the shadow self, where we have um, a Detective Riley in Mayhem being, we find out what her story is. Yeah, we do. So we have, like, her, it's like kind of like her id versus her, like, her ego. Like, it's just like... Mm -hmm. Her her, her 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 emotional side, her rage, is right. actually removed from her actual intellectual self, like her calm self, her yeah. rational self, and, and it's it's this, so her her the, so the good side is completely removed of like uh, rage, focus, like she she it's taken out of her, yeah, a, an actual physical separation of oneself, yeah, uh, and then the part where it's really kind of which where it requires a, a deep analysis, which I have to ask you about is when we go into the dark dimension okay. and you get a whole pile of things that go on. I mean, later on in the series, it, it, it kind of becomes something else in the reality world, but like in this, in this dreamlike state where it's nightmarish, uh, right. uh, how, how would, how do you, how, how would you break it down from, from beginning to end from watching the episode? Okay. Well, I guess because there are things I'm inside of, um, uh, Tandy, and what's the guy's name? Oh, Tyrone? Yeah, um, uh, Tyrone. Mm -hmm. um, like they have to deal with stuff, uh, right. but they're not. Mm -hmm. so, th so it's like their psyche mm -hmm. is kind of messed up right now. Okay. Until they kind of um, deal with stuff in their childhood, right? Yeah, right. You know, um, and, and some of this stuff um, like is based on myths uh, create in their minds mm -hmm. in order like to deal with stuff right or else they can't go forward yeah that's especially true in later episodes too when uh when she's being uh, coerced we'll get into later on co coerced into uh this, this another a new villain that gets introduced later on yeah. but uh in in this one uh, okay there is a character <clears throat> like an avatar if you will that, that presents itself to mayhem and to and to um tandy differently yeah, exactly. Uh, what would you What would you call that? What would you describe that? It's like um, in in literature that would be uh, you know like in Dante's Inferno that is your um, uh, Vir Virgil, your guide into the darkness. But like, but, but in terms of like just in that basic analysis, like what is what? How do you interpret that thing? What is it in your mind? Your in your estimation? Well, I guess part of your psyche mm -hmm. is like. Um, uh, is just kind of split off from your normal self. Right. 
and you have to deal with stuff or else or else a whole bunch of things can happen you could go not or have like a psychotic break mm -hmm. so you have to deal uh with all of you know um, with what you need to mm -hmm. um yeah um it's actually you know and your mind can play tricks on you or send you to places Yes, they they play with that even in season one when they just do a lot of. Um, there's one I think I remember in season one they were part where they were, they were invading each other's dreams. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. that was a very heavy episode. Uh, yeah. uh, this is not as heavy. It's not as heavy as that, but it is in on that level of being like just like playing with one's like interpretation of what they're looking, the reality, bending the reality. Yeah, exactly. Um, so what do you? So what do you say about like the record play, the record store, which I find it gets it gets played back later on, but in the dream sequence, in the nightmare sequence, it has a completely different not not spin, but it's a different interpretation. Um, because yeah. she really she she sees her parents like the the actual she was there she was physically there at one point in her life where there was an abuse, and yeah. it deals with abuse. So, so spoilers mm -hmm. for those who don't know, there's a great deal of abuse as one of the major themes in in, in this in this series. And mm -hmm. I think it tackles that pretty well. Like it, it really, without being violent, it, it tackles that theme of like uh, domestic domestic abuse, um, uh, just abuse in general. Yeah, definitely. Uh, where there's gaslighting somebody, or just um, a, 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 just in, a, or the, where it's peer pressure, or just bullying, or just in, again your your parents or someone's close to you. You know, you know they they handle abuse or attack or or uh, yeah, like she was almost attacked in the season one. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, very differently. Yeah. Um, but like in but on the records, like how do you how do you interpret that interpret? Like what does that what does that say to you when you look at those records? Well, well, they're kind of like a storage space, mm -hmm. you know. So then, you know, so then maybe um, uh, you can figure out stuff, right? And function in the real world at the same time, mm -hmm. and then you can like um, um, put it away. And then deal with take out another record, which is something, uh, or you know, it's like a stamp of something like that happens. Mm -hmm. But if you can't deal with it right now, you could just put it back. Oh, so is it, is it more like like compartmentalizing your 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 emotion that would, 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 I thought so? Yeah. Okay. Um, so okay, yeah. so never <laughs> about the psychology and all. So let's get into this episode, the actual series. Uh, so what do you think of the first half of the series, like in general, just your overall thoughts? I liked it actually. Mm -hmm. I liked it, you know, very cerebral. While well, it's getting to be cerebral, right? Um, second part, though, wow, there's a lot of action and a lot going on. Yeah, I think the first one is more like build up, like just get yeah. uh, for those who those who saw this series. It's kind of like a quick recap, and then it's like, okay, let's 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 see how these guys are still broken and build from there. Exactly. And it's about redemption and not redemption. It's like it kind of goes through that that loop, that those cycles. And yeah. Uh, I th yeah, but I think the writing is amazing. I think the writing in this is really solid. And yeah. I think uh, the, whoever did the writing of this did some research in terms of sociology, uh, yeah. psychology, uh, just economics, just like a geo geopolitical economics of like Louisiana at the time too. And of course, you have your little voodoo, and you have your little stuff in, 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 like involved in this. But like, I think it's just it's a really good like melting pot of just different thoughts and ideas that make this thing different. Like from your traditional like, I think you know like Netflix has a very good theme with Daredevil and less the point like Iron Fist, but it has a really good theme of storytelling and action. This has some good action near the half last half of it, but a really good uh, serious tone of doing drama. You know. Yeah. And I thought that was good. This was actually supposed to be a Netflix series, but then they got switched over to uh, Freeform as the last minute. Uh, yeah, I know. And I, I, I can see why, because the themes in this is sometimes really heavy. and uh, But I think it's executed pretty well, uh, considering. And I think it uses the, 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 the psychosis of oneself to mm. display uh, what the light in the dark, you know, as a metaphor. Yeah, exactly. Um, this, I, I, this, I don't know if that comes across vague or not, but it just, I don't know how to say it without... Uh, explain it because there's a lot to explain to unravel, but yeah, definitely. Okay, so for the first half, like from one to ten, how would you rate this one? Um, the first half, mm -hmm. I I don't know, I'd say maybe like a seven or eight. I I liked it. 
Yeah, I like this quite a bit. Yeah, I I give it like a I give it a seven uh, because it 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 really introduced to you all the characters without tipping its hat yet, and yeah. but it was really yeah it was really good, and I'm still coming off the high of seeing the the, the season finale of the first season, so it yeah. really picks up the action with uh, with the character Mayhem especially. I, I loved her character. Uh, after watching this, do you? Because uh, I didn't know much about. Cloak and Dagger personally, but after seeing this series, this kind of makes you want to, does this make you want to uh, read the comic book or know more about the characters or the series? Like you were saying, you wanted to go on further? Yeah, What's... I wanted to know more background or whatever. Right. Although, although, like they did do a uh, good job. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted me, or I made me want to just, you know, um, look at them deeper. Right, right. You know, like all the characters and what happened to Father when it was all done and everything. You know? So yeah, yeah. It was worth watching for me, I think. Well, thanks, Evie. Well, that concludes the show. Uh, I want to thank you uh, for tuning in. Uh, please hit subscribe down below. Hit thumbs up. We really appreciate it on our YouTube channel. Uh, the more we get, the more we can get our names out there. It's good to relax and have something in common, like-minded things to discuss. And that's what, what we want. And we're not looking for a Patreon. We're not looking for any donations or, or anything like that. We just want to hear your thoughts contributing to a collective idea that is our Joy Films. And... Um, and by hitting subscribe, hitting thumbs up, we get to hear, get our voices out there and maybe get more more comments and more uh, more ideas uh, passed around. Because my thoughts are limited. I understand that. I agree. And But I'd love to hear your thoughts too. Whether you like the film, especially if you hate a movie or hate a series. For instance, Iron Fist. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to give a negative review on possibly season two of Iron Fist, maybe season one, or I might be giving a really positive review. Uh, in any event, I would love to hear your thoughts too. Disagree, agree, it's okay, because it's part of us uh, coming together and discussing about films, films that we love and appreciate. So on behalf of Evie and myself, I want to say thank you. Uh, again, send us an email at the Pantheon of M at gmail.com, and it's uh, let us know your name, where you come from, and then it's a little blurb of like where, what you want to say about the film. Uh, we'd we love to say if it's, oh, it's Mary from Toronto or Jackson from uh, Perth, uh, you know, Perth, Australia. We'd love to hear and find out where you're coming from and who's listening to us. Uh, it's great to hear and give a shout. We'll definitely give a shout out to who you are. And we appreciate that as well. So, again, on behalf of Evie and myself, I'm going way too long. We'll see you next week with Season 2, the conclusion of Cloak and Dagger. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.